where the treats at. Is, is this the, the passing of the torch, right? Is this what this signifies? It, it comes down to that, that front office and what they feel is most important. The champ is here. We've touched down from a higher plane. Why you made it here? We always look forward to that week because it was always intense. You know that we ain't coming back. We got to. The man, the myth, the legend, Dante Hall. My, my, my favorite player growing up was Dante Hall. I love you guys in the show, but Dante was my guy. Get to dashing because you're done on the war feet. This episode of Chief Concerns is brought to you by BetOnline.ag. Hey there, Marcus Dash here from Chief Concerns. Just want to comment and say BetOnline is your number one source for all your sports betting needs. Get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for football, baseball, boxing, golf, and much more. BetOnline continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wagers, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use promo code BELIEVE, B-L-E-A-V, for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online, where the game starts. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Chief Concerns, your post-game show. It's your Christmas Day show, so I want to first off start with by saying Merry Christmas to everybody out there in Bleacher Report, our Chief Concerns fans, watchers, and listeners. A tough one. A uh, tough one. I thought we were all. I thought we were gonna come on this show. I, I bought like a Santa Claus hat to wear uh, after the game. Not wearing it. There's no point. We just got nominated. Um, <laughs> Why not? Why not? We just lost JD. Christmas, Christmas is canceled. JD, we got <laughs> nominated. Christmas is not canceled. In front of everybody, and the <laughs> Christmas canceled. spirit for the kingdom is down. That's why. Way That's down. Hey, um, the Grinch stole yeah. the Grinch stole our victory. <laughs> But I uh, just want to – yeah, so to start off here, I mean, there's obviously many ways we can go about this. But uh, offensively, we just looked – I mean, we, we've talked about it every week on, on this show, all our shows, about how the offense doesn't, doesn't look right. I think today everything kind of came to a head as far as how bad the offense is looking. I think today was the probably one of the worst days we've seen this offense look. Um, so, J.D., plenty of reasons behind this one. But what do you – what did you see today that maybe kind of throws you for – kind of keeps you at a loss – because it hasn't looked this bad before, and today it looked really awful. What did you notice from this loss today? Uh, I noticed that we were unfocused. I noticed that we were uh, getting our butts kicked on both sides of football up front. Uh, and I noticed that the Raiders are playing with the whole sense of urgency brought on by their head coach, Antonio Pierce. That's one thing that came out to me glaringly, and we weren't we weren't prepared for it. And part of that was, you know, some of the, the you know the play calling. I just I didn't particularly like it. You, we can even say we we got kind of cute with that one fumble down there, which didn't make any sense to run the time. I think we still didn't run the football effectively like we should have. Um, and Pat wasn't making good decisions at all. He, he had he had a bad game. He had a terrible game, actually. And so I don't think I've seen him play that bad in a long time. I can't even really re- remember a, a game where he was really, like, just out of sorts, like no answers. And it wasn't like some of the, you know, some of the, the plays weren't there. He just wasn't making them. And then he was trying to do too much. I told my brother when we were sitting there watching, I said, man, he's trying to play – uh, Santa Claus, Mrs. Claus, and the elves all at once. He's trying to do it all. And sometimes he doesn't need to do that. Sometimes he needs to trust his guys. And so when you start pressing and you, you don't trust guys, you take off running, you know, you're going to get hurt or you're going to make bad decisions, bad plays, and, you know, trying to extend throwing the football, like, throw it, throw it away. You have another down, throw it away. So I've seen a lot of that today and it was disappointed it was disappointed and it, and it wore on them. you could look you, the game wore on these guys they wore on them so what did you make of the o-line play jd because that was something that i mean obviously max crosby is one of the best in the league but yeah. i mean that's that i mean it just seemed like they were just kind of getting in there on on every run play there was there's a guy back there right we hand the ball off or i mean pat had guys in his face right but i'm not throwing this as an excuse to pat you know you know but like it seemed like the D line was in his mouth all day long. Yeah, when you when you got four that get at home, 
it creates problems. We got we got a we got a butt handed to us up front, offensive line. We did. Wanya Morris in particular. So uh Juwan Taylor, you know, didn't have a solid game. Holding calls, the same thing. So even the running game, we weren't getting up to the second level. The linebackers were making too many plays. And so you, you got to be able to get hard, tough yards. But we, we we got our tails handed to us, man, up front. We got our asses kicked up front. Put it that way. No other way to say it. Yeah. I mean, it's the only way you can kind of uh, summarize what you what we saw today. Uh, just got our asses handed to us. Uh, Tasia, what stood out to you, um, and just what what was kind of the most glaring thing you saw offensively today? Um, off the bat, interesting stat to note: this is the uh, only the second game all season where we uh, won time of possession but lost the game. So that was interesting. But they that's because the Raiders' offense couldn't stay on the field. Um, Hats off to our defense. I'm not going to take anything away from them. They did a great job. Our offense just – it was just so odd. Yeah, I, you said the worst you've seen them play. This almost reminded me of the um, the second half of the Bengals playoff game with Mahomes. Um, we did move the ball this time, but our terrible red zone came out to play again today, and we couldn't do anything once we got there. Um, that – Play call. It was funny when we went forward and fourth down in the red zone in the fourth quarter. Mm-hmm. That's when I thought we needed a trick play. That's when we needed some juice. I wish we would have tried the kind of trick play we tried from our five yard line in the first quarter. Like that wasn't the time for a trick play. Run your offense, dude. What are you doing that? Why are you doing that? When you're desperate in the fourth quarter and you can't score. Now do a trick play. Now let's see what you can drum up there. But no, the Mahomes running circles around uh, D Lyman, uh, jumping over their 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 arm tackles. That's the play. That's what we go with, right? That that that's great. Um, I, I did you agree with not going for a field goal on that fourth, JD? Because I thought we should have gone for a field goal. The, the Raiders were almost a guaranteed three and out. Well, me and my brother we talked about it, and I said. <laughs> You definitely want points. You don't want to take points off the board. If you got three points, you want you don't want to take them off the board. But if you if you get it right, obviously you get the, the touchdown. Yeah, you pin them deep. So that's an, our defense is playing great. You pin them deep, so you still got a short field. Uh, so I, I don't fault the call. I, I at, at that moment that that call taser to me was like that's desperation. Yeah, they, they had to do it right. That's right. So it was. Look, either we go for it now and get something out of it, maybe get some some juice going, flowing for what we needed, or, you know, it's going to be, you know, some with the, with the results. So the, um, I don't mind it. I don't mind it. It's it's funny. I was texting with our, our other brother, who's a, a diehard Raider fan. I'm mm-hmm. sure you know that by now. And uh, we were talking to him, and I, I said it seems like these guys would rather be with their families on Christmas. That's what it seemed like. And his rebuttal was great because it's true. He's like, we're the ones that traveled on Christmas. You guys are actually – you guys had Christmas morning with your with your families. So we're the ones that missed out on that. I was like, yeah, you're right. We have no excuse. We're, we're the ones that – but they, it looked like they wanted to get back home as soon as possible. I just didn't see – I just didn't see a lot of juice. I just didn't see a lot of juice out there. Like, there was one play in the end, and Marcus heard me freaking out over it, where um, um, we were pushing the pile with CEH. I think it was CEH. No, it was Richie James. And Allegretti came out of nowhere and nailed the pile. I was like, there you go. For I think it's the first time I've seen an O-lineman push a pile this entire game. They just stand around. And the Raiders jumped in every time to push it back. But our guys are kind of just like too much standing around, man. Just too much standing around. Not enough urgency. Not enough. You think we were flying high and on like a seven-game win streak and you just fell asleep at the wheel or something. But no, we we, we needed this. And we didn't play like we did. Well, Allegretti had fresh legs coming in for Trey, for one. <laughs> uh, but also, too, I, you know, when, when it's that many weeks in the game and you're still trying to figure things out, uh, it, 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 it just weighs on you. It weighs on you, and especially what the D-line has been doing to you all game. I guess it's a battle. Like when I'm, uh, you know, The Raiders D, D-line, man, is probably one of the toughest in the league. Okay, yeah. just, just, just be honest. And so they were coming every single play. Yep. Relentless. When Pack would take off running, they're after him. They're behind him. 
They're crushing it. They're hitting it. They were relentless the entire game. And we have a hard time when we deal with all defensive lines like that. That's like the, the, the Bengals, right? You know, yeah, I was going to say that. Like that. Man, look, when you yeah. got like the Bengals, they're, they're a defensive line that likes to come all the time. You're not going to wear them down. It doesn't matter what they're doing. They're going to keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. You know, hopefully they're going to strip the ball. They know. Like, look, after this game is over, you can rest. Get on the plane, rest, get back home. But how sweet will it be to get that win heading back? Like, that's what you have to worry about. And yeah. so those guys came in. They came into the game like – it was going to be a no-quit attitude. And Antonio Pierce said that. He probably like, look, it sucks that we're traveling right here on, on Christmas. Okay? So let's make the most of it. How about we do that? Right? Let's ruin that Christmas. Let's go out there and just absolutely celebrate an arrowhead. You know, and I'm talking about not just the Chiefs, the, the Chiefs players, but the fans in all of Kansas City. We want to ruin everybody's Christmas. Okay? We want to play the Grinch. And so that's what they did. That's what it looked mm -hmm. like. So when, when, you, when you're not matching other people's, you know, energy and juice, it shows. We couldn't match that. You know, we just couldn't just line up and hit guys in the mouth because it just wasn't working. And it was up across the board, which you were seeing. The D-line was just taking turns and opportunity on hitting everybody. Heck, the secondary was flying around. <clears throat> there was times that Pat could have checked the ball down. Yeah. He did a bad job checking the ball down just to advance the ball three or four yards. He didn't want it. He was just looking down the field to look for the deep ball. Man, throw it. Check down. Give the CH. Let him break the tackle. Let him get four or five yards. Take it. Take what the defense is going to give you. And so he wasn't doing those things at all. He wasn't. So this one, without a doubt, to me, man, was, was more on Pat than anything else as far as the offensive woes and the O-line. Okay? I think everybody else – play decent. I mean, our wide receivers is, is, is who they are, right? We, we know what the wide receivers are. But they, they actually played a decent game today. Uh, but I'm going to talk about our, our, our number one guy, Rasheed Rice. He still needs some dog in him. He still ain't got the, the routes down like the way he needs to. He, he just, you got to be able to stack guys. He's not stacking guys. That, that one we run on fourth down, that's a bad route by him. Not getting open. He got to be able to separate and get open. And he didn't do it. He, he just didn't do it. When I sit there and I watch, I said, man, that's a bad route. Pat is looking for him to be back corner ball, pile on throw. That's what it is. He's got all that room to work, man. Get open. Uh -huh. That's your that's your one on one. Get open. So I just it's disappointing, man. It's disappointing. If you look at it, like you said, the point thing, we gave him, we gave him two touchdowns on offense. That's crazy. That's crazy to me. Really. If people just looked at the end of the game and they seen the, the score, they'd be like, dang, I'm it. But they wouldn't realize that we gave up two touchdowns from the offensive side of the ball. That's crazy. Their best offense was our offense. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. 100%. What did you – Um, so we talked about skill players. Um, Obviously, it's been a big topic, but we talked about getting the ball to Richie James a little bit more. It didn't take to the final possession where they actually did it, but, hey, man, Richie James should show that he's got some juice, man. Yeah, 100%. 100%. I'm trying to tell you right now that Richie James is a guy that could help us. He runs better routes than probably probably everybody on the team right now, what I'm looking at. Uh, he knows how to find those windows. And so you got to get him involved. I mean, how many screens do we have to run to the, to, to the tight end and to the wide receiver? I'm like, dang, I'm tired of these little screens that we're giving. And, and that just shows you that we're not calling things effectively down the field to get guys open. Maybe not enough pick routes, maybe something that, you know, you know, uh, the double moves, whatever it may be. But we just weren't doing it. But like I said, that when I'm looking on the field, Pat's missing guys. He's just missing, he's missing guys. He's missing guys. Pure and simple, man. Pure and simple. So do, do you think um it's more because everyone talks about oh, it's, uh, you know, guys aren't getting open. Pat's uh, you know, he doesn't trust his receivers. I think it's more about that because it feels like today, especially Ravens have a good D line, but it feels like today he just wasn't, he didn't feel safe as far as the, in the, being in the pocket. It feels like he was just scrambling before, you know, setting his feet, just throwing it, a uh, two step drop, boom, just finding guys. Like you're saying, he, he's missing guys, but it feels like he's scrambling and escaping the pocket before he even has to. 
because, you know, the, the, the old line was kind of getting beat a lot today, and it seemed like he was escaping before he even had to a lot of the times today. And, yeah. Tasia, it did remind me of the Bengals game. It also kind of reminded me of the Tampa Bay Super Bowl, actually. Two games where it's, it looked like Pat was just scared and just had, was escaping the pocket before he even needed to, and it's not, most times he had to. Well, we know this from Brady's career. You get a pressure on a quarterback, they all look human. They all look closer to average. I don't care who you are. Right. I mean – so, yeah, I mean, if you want to take away the magic from a magician, sack them 15 times and get pressures on them all game. And, by the way, I just looked up 12 out of our 16 – I think it was 12. I think I just counted 12. 12 out of our 16 third downs were third and seven or longer. That's a problem. That's a huge problem. That's because we're used to picking up the chunk yards from Pacheco. They did a great job. It all started with them stopping the run. And I mean stopping the run. Like, we couldn't even get, like, positive yards to start the game the first quarter so it wasn't like we weren't picking up like six yards a clip we weren't even getting like two to three yards a clip our first i think three out of four or four first uh, third downs were third and like 10 third and 12 third and 12 uh it was just yeah third and 12 third and eight third and 15 third and 13 third and 10 our first third and short came mid in that second that touchdown drive we had in the second quarter like that's, yeah well if if you can't run the football effectively. And that's why I said, I think you need to go to it, but that's on our line to get, get, get moving. You got to, you got to move bodies up front. That's your job. Pure and simple. You got to move bodies up front. And if you're not getting to the second, the second level to cut guys off. And we, I didn't see that. I didn't see it at all, all game. They weren't getting to the second level. That's the thing about it. So yeah, you get stuffed or, you know, you, you, you're sitting back because what you become predictable. And I think somebody's saying that over here, yeah, you predict the screen. You can see when things are coming up. You know, when we go in motion, and I'll, I can almost call it. Sometimes we sit there with that with the screen game. But still with that, the, him being unsettled in a pocket was an issue. And so Antonio Pierce, I guarantee that they were harping on, make sure you get in particular lanes, okay? Get up the middle inning, okay? Make it flush outside or maybe let him get in the middle. But what we want to do is just create – some pressure. Just push a guy. Just push a pal. All right? We don't have to get our way back there to sack him. But get pressure so Pat is going to extend the plays. He'll start moving outside the pocket. Let him get inside. That's what we wanted to do. We just want to get him off his grass. That's it. That's it. And so that's – they had a great game plan, what they was going to do. But Crosby, I mean, he, he looked like he was well. And he played like he was well. And he took he took Wanye Morris him to man he, he put one move on him he just like like Rook you ain't ready uh-uh. I mean literally like Wanye ducked his head and he was already around him and in the backfield of C E H almost with the handoff I was like wow I think that's, all, that's the one where he like he like arm barred his helmet yeah <laughs> yeah yeah now, how about C E H man that screen like it was dead uh, dead on arrival. Breaks that tackle, takes us into uh, their territory. Didn't score on that uh, on that on that drive there, but Ch gave us some chances, gave us some life today. Um, yeah, that's what you needed. You need somebody to up, man. Make plays. You need somebody to make plays. Yeah. yeah. When I when I was looking, they, they had up there on the uh, on the screen. They was talking about where we were ranked for five years, like first in all the categories, and this year with the ranking. And I'm sitting there thinking, well, what's the correlation? What could it be? So I'm sure it's a number of things, obviously, right? But, uh, you know, when you don't have that veteran presence in the room, okay, maybe no continuity as far as maybe, you know, some of the coaching in itself. Uh, and then you lack the type of, lust, you know, uh, the luster to, to actually push guys to do particular things. Like, it, it's all like a perfect storm. That's what you're seeing right now. And I, to, to be honest with you, uh, if we didn't give up the two touchdown scores, I wouldn't have been worried. Now I've got a little concern. This is a little concern for me. It really is. Uh, I know the guys will bounce back because that's just who they are. But the the lack of answers this game, I'm like, what the heck? What were, what were we thinking going into it? So Yeah. I mean, it's tough to win a game in the NFL when you lose turnover battle. It's tough to win the game when you lose it by two. It's tough to win a game. It's even harder to win a game. The percentages just plummet 
when you when both of those result in defensive touchdowns and back to back within five seconds against a really good pass rush, it just honestly it worked out best case scenario for them. Um, they yeah. were able just to pin their ears back and just rush the hell out of us the rest of the game. Well, become one dimensional. Yeah. 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 And Butker missed a field goal. I mean, like it was just a perfect storm of bad for us. Um, Dallas and shake, didn't he shake one? He shake one, dude. You know, yeah, Dallas? Shake one, yep. yeah. Um, so yeah, it was, it was, man. He shanked when we also had a throw of the game on both sides between Aiden O'Connell, Mahomes, and uh, Townsend. Townsend had the best throw of the day. <laughs> that was the best throw. Yeah. He completed more passes in the second half than O'Connell did. <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah. Uh, the stat is talking about O'Connell did not complete a pass in entire in three entire quarters and the Raiders beat, beat us. So yeah, 62 yards in the first quarter, zero second quarter, zero third quarter, zero fourth quarter. Aiden what? O'Connell. Yeah. He didn't complete a pass in the second half? Nope. Three quarters. Three quarters? Wow. Three quarters. Well, I mean, I mean, we've seen where the, the, the we seen where the score came from. Yep. Well, here's my th- question too, though. I mean, our defense did a good job. I'm sure you're gonna talk about it right now, but didn't the coaching staff know that he didn't complete a pass for three quarters? Like at that point, play goal line D in that last drive. I mean, you still got three capable wide receivers and a tight end. So, yeah. I mean, it, it, as long as you throw it at them, I mean, I get it. Like that yeah, one, I mean, you have Kobe Myers, I, I'll take that shot too. True, but that didn't work for three quarters. But yeah, no, but I mean, but you can't, but you can't, you know, what I mean, you, you can't just get away from that part of the game. Uh, you're hoping that somebody's going to break out, you know, and hopefully that that changes is what you're looking for. But heck, all of a sudden now your your run your, your run game is just Slashing us. I mean, ain't that guy. Help them jokers back in, man. Look good. I mean, to talk about defense and what we did to O'Connell, kind of stifling their, their pass game. Last, obviously, last drive of the game, we needed a stop. They, we didn't get a stop. They ran the ball down our throat, just couldn't stop. I mean, it seemed like the defense was, you know, held serve all game. They just finally couldn't do it anymore. I mean, it's tough to do it all game long. But, um, I mean, is this one of the cases we're going to look back to and say, man, we really wait? You can, it's, some people are already giving up on the talent of the year. I'm not. But, like, this may be one of the games you look back. It's like, damn, like, we really lost, like, one of the, probably the best defensive performances we've seen in such a long time. Um, and we're going to look back at this game. Like, man, we our offense gave them the other team. We, we gave the other team points. We gave them the victory. And we kind of gave up one of the best defensive performances I think we've seen in a while. Because our team is just a little over the years. We haven't had performances like this. And that this one, I mean, we just we dominated them. Quarterback didn't complete a pass for three quarters. I know. What, what did you what, what did you make of the, the defensive play? I forget the last drive. Obviously, that we had to take that into account. But what did you make of the, the defense today, JD? Stingy man, they were stingy. I, I mean, that's that's what you want to see. So they got some pressure on him. Uh, did a great job uh, against the wide receivers. I mean, they they. I mean, daggone, when you talk about being physical. It was physical against the, the wide receivers today, and it, it was beautiful just watching it. But it is a superb job, man, up front. Wish could have got some help on the offensive side of the ball. And, you know, it's like one of those things, you know, you just keep, you keep doing your job, keep doing your job, and all of a sudden, you know, heck, the damn breaks. It's like, dang, we, we've been out here all this time. Tell you, what was the, uh, what was the uh, what's the name at the uh, time of possession, you know? Yeah, it was uh, 34 and change to 25 and change. We had him by about nine minutes. Really? Yeah. And then that's that's counting, a, again, like a, a th- almost a three-minute drive to end the game. So, I mean, they, they if you take away that drive, I mean, I don't take away a drive of the game, but they would have like 150 yards total in that game. They have 205 for the game after a 61-yard drive. So <laughs> they would have like 150, and they would have had like 22 minutes of possession in that game. It was so Again, lopsided. they scored two touchdowns in like seven seconds of defense. Well, it's, I know. it's done. So lopsided, man. I just it's, it's it's weird even just saying it and thinking about it. Like, dang God, how can we just our, our defense is just that good, you know? But our offense is just struggling. I mean, struggling bad. Uh, even when our offense is playing great, I don't think our defense struggled this bad like that in the game. You know? No. It was like still mid of the pack, you know, just kind of keeping keeping us in it, like a striking distance. 
they doing everything possible to win this game. Like, look, man, we here it is. We we, we put in every scenario to win the game. What do you need? All you need to do is just you know just move the ball, move the football, man. And Peter was smart. He was just like, you know what? Um, I'll take. I'm gonna bet on my pass rush. Just run the ball the rest of the game. I don't want this guy giving up a stupid fumble or a stupid pick, and they have the ball to twenty and they score, and it's a different game. Run the ball every time the rest of the game. If you're gonna throw a short, easy pass, make sure it's in the, either in the dirt or it's in the guy's uh, in the belly. So smart, smart for him. And now well, I, I also want to call. Sorry. Uh, attention to that almost interception that path through that hit the ground that hit the, the the ground. Yeah. How about that cornerback made a better play on that ball than MVS did? MVS watched that guy go for the ball when he could at least tried something there. No, I think MVS was because he had you had the uh, the tight end that was up on the sideline. He actually came off MVS to make that play. Mm. So MVS is pulling up because he could see, he could feel that there was another wide receiver. That's why like like the scramble drill. There's rules to it, okay? There shouldn't be two guys in the same area. It just shouldn't be. But more so than anything than that, that's on Pat, man. Throw them. I said, oh, man, yeah. throw, them. throw them to the, the third seats in the stands, whatever you need to do. Or just run, or straight to the dirt. Not like, man. not close enough that the guy can almost catch, and he should have caught it, actually. Man, pick off Antonio Pierce on the sideline. Do whatever. whatever. Yeah. But just don't make that throw. Just don't make that one. Yeah, and he didn't have the thing was he didn't have to. He didn't no. even hit that throw. No, you know, first off, you, you're under pressure. You got three guys on you, which you can get potentially get yourself hurt, all right? Because you keep holding the ball, holding the ball. That's another thing, man. He just keeps putting himself in jeopardy by doing those things. That's what I hate seeing. Like, man, I'm like Pat, man, get rid of it. Just get rid of it, man. We got another down to go play. Let that one go. Yeah, right. I just just let it go, man. Hey, God. That was yeah. probably his exhaustion, man. I've never seen him run like run for his life like that. He probably, if they did one of those metrics on how much a guy ran, not like forward yards, I mean just steps, period, that might have been the most he's ever moved before in a game in his life. Yeah. So Lateral so movement, cool. getting around, circular. Like, he was running nonstop in the game. I'm telling you, what do you have, like 60 yards rushing? Yeah, yeah, in a lot. Yeah, I mean, he saved his he saved his fantasy day with his rushing yards. Oh well, yeah, no, 100, 100. <laughs> some of that is on the O line, and some of that's on Pat. Fifty three yards rushing. Yeah. So they both at fault for that one because sometimes you don't have to run because you're looking for the deep ball. Take the check down. Just take the five yard. Just take it. That's all he had to do. And he's searching down the field, and he's missing guys. There's several times, man, he just he missed guys. He missed MBS, he missed uh, uh Rice, he missed uh Richie James. It was, it was uh, several, several things I see. He missed Travis Kelsey a couple times. And granted, mm-hmm. these things will happen in the game, but to me, it just seemed like he was just holding the ball, trying to make the big play. And sometimes it's not the sexy play you need to make, Pat. I get it. You know, like I said, you don't have to be Santa Claus and Mrs. Claus and everybody at once, you know. There was even one or two times he should have ran it when he didn't. Marcus, yeah. you, you remember that play yeah. that he like, kind of lofted it for Rice and that it was play more, was he, not it wasn't, there. It was a Rice versus Watts, and he it was it was it was a, there was like he was a triple cover there, and he, he had he had a wide open lane for. Uh, well, after that though, that's when he started running more 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 so yeah. though. I think yeah. he probably thought about it in his head like, no, screw, it, I'm just gonna run it. It's there, take it, dude. JD, you've been on a sideline. You you you've been through the ups and the downs of a season of a game. Um, and there's two things I want to call out here. Cause a lot of people were saying, oh, the Chiefs are imploding before our very eyes. Kelsey throwing his helmet, uh, retelling the coach not to give him back his helmet. You know, them kind of like, you know, bumping him on the sideline. Then you got Mahomes pissed off right before we missed the field goal. Mahomes is pissed off about us not getting the play in. He said, call a damn play. Um, so two questions there. One, what do you make of the Kelsey throwing his helmet uh, aspect um, and then him kind of get, being pissed off? Uh, and then – the, the play call thing is something everyone's kind of uh, commenting on online. It's like, we're, we're, we're taking forever to get a play in. Seven seconds left in the play clock. We're, we're just breaking the huddle. We're just going to play. Who's that on? Is that OC? Is that Andy? I mean, I guess it kind of goes back to who's the play caller. Right. I mean, that's that's what it is. Because you, when you come out, you just have a scenario already. Like, okay, this, this is where we at. But, I mean, that that is. I mean, the coach makes the call. That's, that's what it is. Whoever is on, whoever's making that call at the time. Pat's like, man, we got to be quick with this. Uh, and so it's the coaches making that 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 call. 
He's down, he's the one dialing it up. Uh, for you know Travis Kelsey, I mean, yeah, it's frustration. He's frustrated, uh, and that's sometimes what guys do. They chuck their helmet. I mean, I don't like it. To me, I think it's uh, you know I'm kind of old school. You know, I think you know, I think things like that, man, is just. <coughs> I've always was taught that, you know, that, that is your, that's your equipment. You take care of it as much as possible. Uh, and I get guys are frustrated. I'm, I'm not faulting him for being frustrated because he should have been. Uh, but sometimes when you're the leader, you got to watch what you're doing because then you start seeing other guys that come out here chucking helmets and whatnot. So yeah, Andy should address it immediately. You know, cause it's like, man, keep your composure. And I, and I think I text, I said, look, we don't need a pissed off pad. We don't. That do not work. We, we need the focus pad. That's what we need. We need to focus Kelsey. We need to focus guys to get these things done. And so sometimes the frustration comes out because you're not being successful, what you usually do. But sometimes you just can't show it. Sometimes you just got to bring yourself back together like, okay, man, look, we just need to methodically do things, okay, get back in this game. And I don't know if they, if, I don't, I don't think they did on sideline or not. But of course, you know, TV's going to show the frustration. So, you know, um, everybody, I think America knows how we feel. Yeah. The, the team and everybody feels. So, yep. Oh, the way I'm freaking out at home, I can only imagine them <laughs> in the field investing like their, their actual sweat and blood. Well, I'm pretty sweaty yeah. too. I'm not bloody though, but blood. I yeah, do blood. get sweaty after those oh, games. Blood. They're pretty hey, intense. Yeah, yeah. Blood too, Tasia. I blood, blood, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tears, all of that, man. They put look, we put it all on the line. Oh yeah, yeah. The, oh, then blood. I thought you meant like you, you and I watch home watching with blood. Oh no, no, uh, no. Yeah. Not yet, but uh, oh, yeah, no. <laughs> but like that in the playoffs, and yeah, you you might get some blood out of me. Uh -huh. Um, but yeah, I can only imagine them. I mean, yeah, I would be, I would lose it, even if I was like a calm player. I just, I yeah, that's. I'd lose it on the sidelines. So before we head out of here, uh, it's 30 minutes now, and everyone's probably going to be planning dinner right now. I, I do want to ask you this. Where do we go from here? Uh, this is kind of the question everyone's asking. Like, this is obviously the team we have in Tampa weeks. This is who we got after the trade deadline. There's no trades. This is it. This is what we got. You got to support the guys no matter what. Um, and, yeah, we do. But we obviously see there's glaring holes and weaknesses in the squad that, you know, this is is what it is. Where do we go from here, J.D.? We, we, we host um, the Bengals. Next week on New Year's Eve at 4:25. I mean, and then week 18 we have the Chargers, which I mean that that team, you know, uh, it's a division game regardless of who the, who's at the head coach. But where do we go from here, JD? Um, are you still feeling the same way you feel about this team? Um, what do you think we need to shore up as we as we 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 head to the playoffs? I mean, the, the reality is this: it, it, you know what our fate is lies in our hands. It, it does. That's that's what it boils down to. Uh, we still in we still in hunt for everything because nobody's just running away with you know uh you know the conference and nobody is so that's the thing about it we sit there we watch and all the other teams and you know the Ravens and the, you know uh the Miami everybody has to pay play each other and so that's the thing about it it's just good competition in the AFC it is you know you don't have the losing record like you do in the NFC of guys doing things and so we it's just it's, it's gonna be a, a much Bigger challenge, more of an uphill battle for us. Uh, but I'm still confident the guys in the room is going to go ahead and get it done. Tougher road, no doubt about it, but it's still doable. It's still doable, man. But they just – you just got to put it all together. You got to put it all together. Tasia, final word here, buddy. Oh, man. Um, what to fix going forward? I had too much to go on. We'd have to do another show on that. I get, I, I, I we're desperate, get more Ross, more playing time. Ross should have had, I think that Rice route maybe should have gone to Ross actually. Um, yeah, maybe would have been better. Give him a lot of confidence, give us a lot of confidence. Um, we need to, we need to win out. We have to end the season on a high note and go to the playoffs as an underdog. Um, we haven't seen that before, so that would be win out or lose out. I mean, we you know we're still going to be an underdog in the playoffs, so I'm curious to see how we uh, we fight back. It's time to show heart, man. Yep. As of right now, we're playing the Bills in the first round of the playoffs. That'll wow. be that'll be fun. Um, yeah. Good. Good. So, Good. We, we we host them at least, so it would be a game at Kansas City. So I mean, that'd be that'd be a fun game. A little we, rematch. We need that though. That's, 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 
It's yeah, we do. That's the game we need to get back. Sometimes, like games that you know you lose that you shouldn't have lost, those are the games that might help you know revamp what you were trying to do. Okay, so it's like, look, we just got to go and saw wood. So hey, the Bills was the one that beat us and put us kind of predicament. We gave it up to them. At this moment, we get them back first, right? Because everybody's scared, almost scared of the Bills because of what they have. Let's chop the head off. With, we'll start with that right first. That's the first snake we chop the head off of. And then everybody else, whoever it is, they come next. So I think it's got to be, it's got to be a message. I tell you, man. I, I mean, I would, I would be absolutely elated if I was in the locker room. I would be. You don't dodge anybody. It's not scared of nobody. That's that's just the way it works. Mm-hmm. So you want the tough that if I'm Andy Reid, I'm like, I want the toughest schedule. At this moment, people doubting us and put us behind eight ball, whatever it is, give us the hardest schedule then in the playoffs. Let us prove ourselves, right? We got plenty of doubters, even the ones in this room. Hell, we got guys in the room who's doubting right now. It's time for everybody to tighten up. So this is the best way to do it. You want to get you want to get your, your name back? This is the way you do it. The toughest road. How about that? Earn it. Earn it. Yeah. And Bills are not world beaters. We saw them almost lose to the Chargers. Um, I think Ron, Ron81 here says, don't overlook those Chargers. The Bills almost did. Um, I think Chargers beat the Chiefs. I don't know about that. However, division game, I don't think we're going to be overlooking uh, anybody. So, um, oh, yeah. yeah. I would hope not, especially after this one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And say, it's a wake-up call for everybody. But all right, guys. Well, that's it. We're gonna get out of here. Everyone, go enjoy, go enjoy your families and the rest of this Christmas. Um, Merry Christmas, everybody. Love you guys, JD. I texted you earlier this morning. Yes, you, were, yeah. you were probably up with, with the with the with the grandkid uh, opening up presents. <laughs> yeah, we came over here later, man. I, I was sitting over here putting the treadmill all that together. Uh, sure, it was a long night cooking. I cooked all day, and I was I was cooking. And he was giving me updates on everything. Oh boy. What's happening? I'm starting to look at him. He's like, hey, you know, Papa, he almost had it. He almost dropped the chop uh, dropped it. In. I said, he almost he said almost, but he dropped it. So he was keeping me updated <laughs> first quarter while I was cooking. So I like yeah, that. man. Hey. But, um so uh we hope everyone enjoys their Christmas tonight. JD and I will be on tomorrow at noon on Bleach Report for our grade show. JD's gonna break down and for it. We have to do it, we do it every week. He's going to break down what he saw from each position group and give us a grade uh, for what he saw today. But, guys, love you guys. Uh, we guys have a Merry Christmas and enjoy the rest of your night with the families. Right. Have a Merry Christmas, okay? Look, this game is over. Enjoy your family now, all right? That's that's the most important thing at this moment. Enjoy your family, okay? You can still enjoy those things, all right? That's true. Merry Christmas, brothers. Merry Christmas, everyone. Take it easy, everybody. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out the best clips from Chief Concerns. And if you prefer to listen to the show, subscribe and follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and anywhere else you get your podcasts.